part eight, basic tutoring strategies. We're looking at sentence combining. This is to develop both writing fluency and syntax, as well as letter sound relationships. And again, there's no single strategy or approach, an effective approach to any literacy, whether it be in a gen ed classroom, a special ed classroom, or a teaching, tutoring, or remediation situation should be comprised of many elements, the 10 that I went over previously and which I will review at the end of this. But sentence combining is a strategy, and I will tell you about it in a minute, to develop both writing skills and syntax. And remember, syntax is one of three cueing systems the brain uses, semantics and phonological processing. Here you give students two short sentences. Let students see them. All right? Uh, they do some word work here. You want to use word or word work that's related to students' lives, meaning you want to find sentences and words that are related to students or their lives somehow. It could be something as simple as using a student's name. And again, if I want to reinforce a spelling pattern here, I might just include one of those words in my sentences. The students see and read the two sentences. You can do it together using choral reading or whatever. The student must combine these to form one sentence here. And again, as they do this, they're developing a sense of grammar. And you can provide implicit mini lessons there on grammar and whatnot. I always ask students to speak the sentences first out loud. And you play with this, but I like to write it so that the students can see it. Now remember, I want students to be successful. I don't want to overwhelm or frustrate students. I then use an approach called scaffolded writing, where uh, as students are writing, I say the words and make some of the sounds and provide spelling, uh, spelling prompts as the student is writing provide oral phonics and spelling prompts. If the student is writing dinosaur, I might go da, da, I, na, na, as they're writing just to help them out. Uh, scaffold, get a little ahead of where the student is at, provide enough structure so that the student can be successful. And the goal here is to develop reading fluency as well as writing implicit sets of grammar, but used here to help develop reading fluency to develop a sense of syntax. Remember, again, one of the cueing systems. And then, to practice fluency, I have students read and reread for fluency, meaning that they reread it until they can uh, get it without error or almost without error. And if you use just two sentences, that should not take quite as long. Remember, you're using words with which, which students are familiar. Which brings me to something I just said, scaffolded writing. And again, the goal is to develop letter sounds, reading fluency, and syntax. Here, students uh, think of things, think of two to four things to say. That should be think, not things. The student thinks of two to four things to say. If it's post-reading, I say, what do you want to tell me about the story you just read? And they may have two or three uh, sentences, all right? Or if it's the beginning of the day, form of language experience, what do you want to tell me about what you did yesterday? All right? It goes from oral to written. I want the child or children to speak the ideas first out loud and then write. And as we write, I provide prompts, and I'll go over those in just a minute. This is a great post-reading activity. As I said before, tell me two or three interesting things about the story that you want to write about. Provide prompts, as I mentioned before, as the child is writing. Oral prompts, just enough to hear the sound and make the sound help with spelling and pronunciations. That works great if you're doing individually. Uh, if you're doing small group activity, you could have students working together doing this, uh, but does not work as well. Whole class, you'd have to do some other things here. All right. That has been some of the basics. We'll be looking at scaffolded oral reading next.